Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about uh, behavior definition. Uh, why we need a behavior definition? Um, with the help of CDSU, we could be able to create uh, read-only applications, right? So uh, if we want to create, update, delete of our uh, business object data, so we have to somehow enable the transaction capabilities, correct? So for that, uh, we need a behavior definitions where we can define our uh, how the data should be created, updated, or how modify needs to be done, or uh, what are the validations we can uh, have, or what are the determinations we can have. Like that, we can define in our uh, behavior definition. So to create the behavior definitions, there is a new ABAP repository of ob objects are available uh, called uh, behavior definition language. So which is nothing but uh, uh, how uh, CDS view having the data definition language, right? So the BDL will be almost a uh, syntax similar to the data definition language. So you can define uh, one entity for your behavior definition or you can define multiple entities for your behavior definitions so uh, uh, so uh, the you have to must define your uh, root entity of your vivo so you can have child entities behavior definitions but uh, behavior definitions for the root entity should be specified let's say like i have defined all the cap transactional capabilities so where do i implement those logic so for that uh, we have we have a uh, implementation class we can call it as a behavior pool so where we define all of our actions or determination validations logic you can have one uh, uh, behavior implementation or maybe n number of behavior implementation classes well so basically it has been defined with two segments one is behavior characteristics another is behavior body so let's discuss about uh, behavior characteristics the first one will be the persistent table we need to mention our uh, database table uh, here uh, when in the case of uh, managed scenario so in the case of unmanaged scenario uh, anyway, it's an uh, application developer to handle all uh, standard uh, code operations, right? The next will be the draft table. So when we are uh, enabling the draft for our business object, so we have to mention the database table for the draft. Uh, so if we, uh, this, this is a magic, I mean, this draft table will be similar like our persistent table but with additional admin fields saving option so there are two options with additional save and uh, with unmanaged save if you would like to uh, save or maybe call some other implementations like a login uh, when uh, while saving then we can go with uh, with additional save so if you want to handle all the save option uh, then we can go with our uh, unmanaged save option. ETAC, it's like a optimistic concurrency control, uh, which uh, avoids uh, modification of the data by multiple users uh, simultaneously. Locking, it's called as a pessimistic concurrency control. So this is similar to uh, ETAC, uh, which uh, avoids uh, concurrency access to the database table records the functionality wise uh, e tag will be having a uh, e tag field which will be compared when we raising the change request if the field is say then it will allow the change request otherwise it will reject that request whereas in the case of locking uh, when there is no locking on the certain record or table, then it will allow changing that record or table. Otherwise, uh, it will not. 
So authorization which will protect your data from the unauthorized access. Early numbering and late numbering. So it's 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 basically uh, assigning your primary key fields. Okay, but uh, early numbering and late numbering references. In the early numbering, we uh, I mean uh, the primary key fields will uh, will be assigned at the time of uh, transactional buffer itself. But in the late numbering, at the time of commit before saving the data into the database table so the primary key fields will values will get assigned so basically uh, for late numbering uh, it's uh, very helpful when you want your uh, number ranges uh, number ranges gap if you want to avoid number ranges gap then you can go with the late let's talk about the behavior body the first one will be the field characteristics. Uh, so here we can add uh, uh, the capabilities like uh, mandatory. So uh, whether the field is mandatory or whatever the field is or read only. So whether we can enable this field for uh, future control. So the additional uh, this kind of uh, capabilities we can depend for the fields. Second one will be the field numbering, which is a managed way of primary casing. So in our uh, previous uh, behavior characteristic, uh, we have our numbering concepts, right? So the both early numbering and uh, late numbering will be handled by the application developer. But uh, there is the case of uh, field numbering, uh, while the managers value framework will be assigning uh, primary key field assignments. With the help of UIDs. Wrap view operations or uh, standard operations like uh, create, update, delete. So create the association, uh, read the associations, right? So in managed scenarios, uh, uh, these standard operations will be handled by the framework. Where in the case of a managed scenario, it's application developer responsibility to handle the logic for this uh, uh, create read update create association create association so we have also uh, uh, other uh, non-standard operations like uh, actions functions uh, which helps to modify the uh, application data whereas a function will helps to read the uh, uh, application data Validations which will check uh, consistency of the business object exchange data. Determinations uh, we can calculate uh, new fields or uh, maybe determine uh, uh, new values uh, at the time of runtime itself. Type tapping, let's, uh, uh, let's infuse values or uh, the database table fields. Uh, field names and uh, series field names will be different so in order to manage those scenario we can map those fields in our behavior definition implementation grouping uh, like uh, how we have an implementation class for all the vivos behavior definitions uh, for all the vivos so we can uh, group these classes for each business object like the root entity and separate logic or uh, child entity and separate logic, leaf entity and separate logic. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, uh, overview of our behavior uh, definition. Let's uh, see how uh, how we can create a behavior definition. Okay. So we have uh, and we have. I hope uh, we have some understanding with the behavior definition. So I would like to show you a small demo about how we can create a behavior definitions. So before that, I have created a, the request prerequisite to have successful. So yeah, let's uh, let's take a look. So I have I wanted to create some task application. It's a kind of to-do application. So I have already uh, 
the task database tables created so one is a so one is a header table where we have a key field as a task UID and uh, this is a unique field uh, which refers the task ID and what is the task name and what is the status and some admin related fields likewise I have a item table okay so here I have a UID for the uh, task item and uh, I referred uh, for inquiry relationship for this UID of a task and uh, it has a unique uh, ID of a task item then subtask name when is the duty and admin fields so on top of uh, this both database tables I have created a CDS fields so these are both I views so I have created a root view entity because task will be our uh, root entity which will be a compositional relationship this compositional relationship is uh, must defined for our uh, SQL about programming or maybe with the uh, if you want to create a behavior definition so this is really important so I have a composition relationship 0 to n for the task item and uh, here the task item we have a uh, normal view entity which is uh, which is uh, having the association to parent which defines uh, which who is the parent for this uh, entity and uh, so uh, let me quickly create uh, uh, so let me go ahead and create a uh, behavior definition so task uh, view so uh, maybe you can do a right click so you will be having an option called new behavior definition so this will be on top of this g1 task so this is our uh, root view and uh, you could see here the implement type is i'm going with a manage click on next so view the pr and Okay. So here we have some uh, code generated for our uh, behavior definitions. So we have created a manage the implementation class also it's uh, suggested a unique class. So it's not a implemented. So we have to create this object, it's not yet created. So strict will uh, uh, check whether the behavior uh, definition is having any issues according to the best of practices. It will uh, like for example here it says some warning, right? Here it's like a task UID is a part of a GA task but not not of the table. So the mapping definition should be there. So these kind of the best of practices uh, it will suggest that if we want if we don't want this we can commit this uh, strict as well so i have a defined behavior so i'm going to define behavior for my view if you want you can provide a values okay. so i'm providing like uh, calling this behavior definition name as a task here we have seen what what is the persistent stable so as we know g task will be our persistent stable this is the lock masters so lock master means uh, this is what the master table which will handle all the lock uh, capabilities automatically that framework will be taken care of it and the authorization masters which is instance so for every instance the authorization check will be done so we have to uh, make the authorization logic in uh, in the, in the corresponding method of this implementation class and uh, uh, we have a view that if you want to enable we can enable it even here also for managed scenario application framework will be taken care of everything so you will be having a create update table in association item table basically create this creation of the entries for this database table automatically like a template table 
and for association as well. Because while creating the uh, task uh, entries as well, we can be able to associate the entries of item, we can be able to create it. Otherwise, we can't create a uh, separate item. That's what this association means. Only we can count, we can create it by a date by a association. Likewise, we have a for the task item child entity as well. We have a diff, uh, behavior definition and uh, the persistent table is some task item and the log which is dependent by task which means the log for this uh, uh, it's it's always dependent by its uh, master so that's why we have given as a log dependent by task so there is no separate log in the function for that. so that's why uh, we have mentioned here as log dependent by task and uh, likewise authorization also we need to handle the via uh, the master I mean root entity so that's why authorization dependent by task and uh, we haven't enabled for interactor so I haven't enabled here and there is a we have already the task item created by our association so there will not be a creation mentioned here so uh, this will be for update and delete so here is called as a field read only so the task view id will not be changed in the uh, item level because this this has a unique id generation in the task and we have association back to the task so here uh, we have seen couple of the concepts right uh, so one is our behavior uh, uh, body and the other is a behavior characteristic so this before I mean after this defined behavior so whatever they have mentioned it's a behavior characteristics which which, which uh, tells what this business object will do what are the characteristics of this business object like this we have a characteristics for the item business object as well so here this mention uh, tells the wrapper about that what are the body of this what are the additional capabilities it can do we will be adding like a validation determinations in our upcoming session uh, so this is what uh, the overview of uh, behavior definition I have activated the behavior definition so sorry it got activated so yeah uh, thank you for watching have a good time